Welcome to Climbing the Sycamore Tree. I'm Jason Angelette, joined by Chase, Chase Dwight, Dwight yeah. Brother Jacob, Michael Scortini. And we're here uh, today. We're going to talk about a couple of big things on the radar. First is we, uh, we just celebrated a Good Shepherd Sunday. And so uh, as fathers, all of us here, uh, we're in the common priesthood, uh, but you're in the ministerial priesthood, right? I say that right. So we're going to talk about father, what that means, father being a father in the church and, and how we're called to, how you're called as, as a shepherd to shepherd us souls, but also as uh, men in our faith and our, in our families, as fathers to help lead our, our families in faith in Christ. And, but also we want to talk about what's going on right now, a little bit in, um, in the world right now, in the social media, we're seeing this in the news, um, the leak and a lot of the attacks going on in the churches, uh, pro-life groups being attacked and targeted. Uh, the, the talk about um, overturning Roe versus Wade. And I guess the big thing that we're going to try to bring out is is what are the bishops asking us to do right now? Something very powerful that starts actually tomorrow um, with Our Lady of Fatima feast day to prayer, to, to fasting, and especially to the rosary as a family can be doing this. So without further ado, um, let's talk about, let's get into prayer. Father. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God, our Father, we thank you for the many blessings you've given us, especially during this Easter season. We are approaching uh, the time of Pentecost, the coming of the Holy Spirit. We ask that you send uh, this Spirit among us, that uh, he fortify us, strengthen us in following his path, your path that you uh, lead us. We thank you for the witness of the apostles, how they went out without fear, how they proclaimed this new gospel message, the message of the resurrection. And uh, we too are called to be those apostles, to go out uh, with that great trust in your grace, great trust in your mercy. So we ask that you strengthen us, fortify us, help us to respond generously to your call to witness. And we ask this praying glory be to, to the, the Father and to the Son and to the, Son, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit, as it was in the beginning, beginning is now and ever shall be, world or without end. end. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. So, Father, thank you so much. In your prayer, you talked about um, uh, the fear, like, right, like not being afraid. And I, I think that there's uh, something about that that really strikes us that we can easily fall into that fear and remain silent to what's going on in the world and to, to be oblivious, to kind of check out and to kind of um, lose our focus of where we should be uh, at this time. And, and kind of like, again, kind of setting the stage before we talk about the pro-life stuff. Again, going into the idea that we're, we're shepherds in our home and to take on that responsibility. So maybe, Father, can you help us uh, understand that from, from you know, what, what did you preach on on Sunday and what are you encouraging us and, and for yourself? Putting me on the spot. So. I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I definitely touched on what it means to be a shepherd, what it means also to um, guide and to lead. And definitely fear is a factor when it comes to shepherding souls and shepherding those family members or people that God puts in your life to bring them closer to the Lord. In the uh, Bible, maybe you've heard that this phrase, do not be afraid, yeah. comes up 365 times. And it's so awesome to see that we have 365 days in the year, that constant message that the Lord is speaking to his people of Israel, to the Blessed Virgin Mary, to Moses, to Abraham, so many people that God calls to follow him. He calls them and often says those words, do not be afraid that I am with you. And, you know, it is easy to get overwhelmed. And you see when God calls Mary, Joseph, the prophets, um, so many people throughout salvation history that he calls them to a great mission. And, you know, especially I think with the prophets, right? They recognized, right, God was calling them, but like Jonah or some of these uh, prophets that were, were afraid, right? They ran in the opposite direction. Jonah, you know, when the Lord called him, right, he got on a ship and went, sailed in the opposite direction. He wasn't going to go to Nineveh, right? Because he knew what Nineveh was. It was like a pagan city. And God was asking him to call them all to repentance, right? It's like sending one of us to Las Vegas and saying, go out to the casinos, go out to all these, you know, places and tell people to repent, right? And for us, that can be very intimidating. But when we know that it's the Lord who has our back, yeah. we have nothing to fear. And so being a shepherd, 
uh, means taking care of those people that God has placed in our life. And, you know, of course, because of the great love that we have for those people, especially as a father of a family, right, for your children, for your spouse, that, you know, you're going to do whatever you can to protect them. However, right, we do know, and there's going to be a lot of day-to-day -day situations where it's not easy, right? There's going to be things that are pulling, pulling on the kids, pulling on your spouse, uh, situations that is going to be sticky to bring up, you know, the truth that we can sometimes shy away from that responsibility. So um, definitely, I think, as we look at the Good Shepherd, Christ himself, right, he was not afraid to call out the scribes and the Pharisees. He was not afraid to preach repentant, repentance and to preach the truth, right? He knew what his mission was, right? And he stayed focused on that mission. So often in the Gospels, right, it continues to say, and Christ made his way down to Jerusalem. Why? Because he knew that that's where his mission was going to be fulfilled, right? Through his own passion, his death, but above all, that through the suffering, through the pain, would come the resurrection. And Chase, when you think of like the good shepherd, like what do you think of as far as like encouraging you as a father to kind of take on that kind of role to be that person that steps into the breach, this person that like is guarding and guiding and protecting the flock? Yeah, I like that, that kind of guarding and guiding analogy. Too. I, I, I guess everybody who's a, a, a father kind of envisions themselves as somewhat of a hero, and I'd like to, yeah. <laughs> to think of myself in that role with my two young daughters, my beautiful wife. Um, but it struck me, uh, thinking about that analogy since Sunday, the, mm -hmm. the Good Shepherd analogy, and then again, in in Mass today, I went to a Mass for my daughter's graduation. It was beautiful. Yeah. And I, I was thinking during the the Eucharistic prayer of um, us being called to the Lamb Supper, so using mm -hmm. that same shepherd, but then the Lamb who gives of Himself yeah. for the flock, like the mm -hmm. the Lamb is the sacrifice. I think that's what it all boils down to: is self sacrificial love. Like mm -hmm. I don't think I'll ever. I hope I never have to you know, encounter a thief in the night or some right, of those right, situations right. where I'll have to be, like there are people who are real life, actual heroes. Yeah. But the small sacrifices as a father that I have the opportunity to make, give me the opportunity to be like that lamb yeah. who is also that good shepherd. Michael, what about you? The, uh, that's a great point. Like sometimes we think of like the big heroic moment where we're like diving, you know, to the bullet and taking it for our family kind of thing. But for the most part, more than likely what's going to happen is, is that we're going to be um, in the small sacrifices, and what does that look like as a as a, in your family? I mean, honestly, when I think of shepherd, one of the one of the words that uh, that I think to describe him is, is humility, is mm. humble. You know, it's it's like you said, it's not the glorious things; it's just the everyday things, and uh, you know, that's and, and those are the important things because those the the daily the daily habits that they get made by the, the small activities, and it's, it's those things that you know we're guiding along the way, you know, just little mannerisms, you yeah. know, how you speak, you know, just little things that uh, you don't even think that they mean anything, but you realize it, you know, when you take a step back and, you, you know, sometimes your kid may embarrass you when you're out in public and they, they say something that uh, you didn't think went outside the doors, but, you know, but, yeah. but at the same token, it works the, the, in way. a positive direction. Yeah. When they see that you are taking the time to, you know, pray before a meal or, you know, um, show reverence to before the Lord, um, that's the only way they learn. Yes. And that's, that's the thing is that like, they are, they are watching. They are very much, um, uh, looking and seeing what we're doing. And, and sometimes it's great to be able to see that, like they're doing something that they should be doing. And like, you know, it's kind of like, and then that's it. Like, I, you know, I mean, glory, glory to God, but like, I taught them that, you know, kind of thing. But then there's other things where like, aren't you seeing what I'm doing? Why can't you do the same? You know, where and it's, there's going to be times where they're not, they're going to be stubborn and sometimes they're going to wander off. And it's again, going back to the image of the shepherd who seeks, leaves the 99 and, and goes out and, and seeks that one that's lost. And, uh, and it takes, it's not like a quick find. Um, there's a beautiful painting where you see the shepherd hanging off of the cliff, like, and he's got his, his uh, thistles and thorns all up on his body and he's reaching out. Um, trying to save his 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 lamb, and uh, and sometimes it's going to cause us to suffer a little bit as we're reaching out trying to be there for our children, um, and it's going to be it's going to be difficult.
Definitely. And right now, as we, as you mentioned a little bit, the situation I think in society has gotten more and more difficult to um, not be afraid, right? There's mm -hmm. like so much aggression in pushing forward. Uh, you could say the agenda that uh, the world has, that it's a very secularized view of what we want to, what people want to get out of life and it's not eternal life right it's living this life here and now it's um, a lot of woundedness a lot of uh, misguided yeah. um, seeking right and and so i think the lord calls us into this world yeah to be a source of uh, guidance and leadership for yeah. those types of people right and, and it's not easy because um, often you know in confronting these types of individuals that you're going to get a lot of pushback and maybe not even an opportunity to get a word in um, so you know it takes a lot of per first prayer and sacrifice but secondly it takes a lot of um, you know imagination and um, teamwork on our part to work together to come up with solutions that can help uh, these kind of situations. Yeah, see, you're moving us from like, so we're at the family. There's so many things that we need to be doing as a family to, to encouraging our, our, our fellow brothers in Christ, our fellow fathers, and to unite each other uh, in or encourage each other in our walk um, to the things, the challenges that we'll face every single day to be that sacrificial lamb at times or to be um, someone who's going to lead by example and to show that love and that compassion and care that they need, but then and then leading outside the home, there's there we're in a world that's in a lot of confusion, and I think a lot of that has a lot to do with the fact that how much the faith has been um, we've been losing the faith as a country, and I feel like the more that we forget God in our life and the role that He plays and the importance that God is in our life, then the more that we'll then begin to forget who we are. And we'll start to lose sight of what is really true and what is really important. And I, and I feel like, again, this battle when it comes to the pro-life movement and trying to help reclaim um, life and love in our, in our, in our country, it's going to take, obviously, a lot of us to kind of go deeper in our understanding of the, the pro-life, like the movement and, and articulate, be able to articulate better our points and to understand better the points of the pro-abort side and to understand where they're coming from and to understand how to talk to them but then at the same time to we need to be praying and fasting for them right right exactly and we were speaking a little bit beforehand about right, how providential right tomorrow we have uh, the feast of our lady of fatima and how that was her message especially in fatima when she appeared to the three children there in 1917 but in all of the Marian apparitions uh you know, here on earth that have been approved by the church, we see that that's usually the common thread of her message is prayer, repentance, mm -hmm. um, sacrifice, pray the rosary, pray for peace. Um, and it's this constant message of prayer and, and turning our hearts back to the Lord. Right? Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. it's helping people to recognize that, you know, we've strayed from the path. And how important it is if we don't kind of turn back to the right path and we don't turn back to her son, to our Lord Jesus Christ. Usually she's predicting bad things are going to happen, right? I remember reading the story of uh, Kibeho where mm. she appeared in Rwanda just about 10 years before the genocide. And she was saying, right, pray for the conversion of hearts that people in Rwanda turn their hearts back to God, because if not, Right, horrible things will happen. It was almost as if she was predicting what was uh, going to happen. And so it's 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 a, an amazing challenge for us um, to suffer. Like I think about you know showing compassion in our world. It's a compassion I heard defined as uh, suffer with. And I think that what's required of us, maybe we're already convinced of what the pro life movement is and and why and our, you know, but going deeper in our understanding. But then at the same time, embracing more of the conversion in our hearts to prayer and to fasting for the, the sake of others. Um, so Chase, what thoughts, thoughts on that? I'm about, I want to read what the bishops have put out and uh, we're going to kind of wrap with that, but I want to get here from, uh, from, from Chase and, and Michael, uh, their thoughts on this right now. Yeah, I think um, 
what you said about being able to articulate your point mm -hmm. better and, and your, your position on this is important now because it's being thrust into the conversations, you know, at dinner tables and at conference rooms and, and water coolers and things like that. So I think us understanding our own position enough yeah. and then being able to listen to other people's positions so that we can, you know, convey to them the message that, that we believe that God has put in our hearts to convey. I think that's important. And then um, I, I can't understate the, the prayer and fasting yeah. part of that enough to, because I mean, in that contemplative prayer, you're able to articulate your thoughts to yourself and then you have the opportunity to kind of um, express your feelings to God and, and get some feedback and, and how you're going to kind of yeah. convey your Because it's, it's something that's got to be delicate. Like it, this is like a lot of times it's heart surgery and there's a lot of woundedness. I feel mm -hmm. like there's a lot of people... Maybe and I'm, I'm wrong, but the people who really are so violently for abortion, I feel like there may be something in their own, I, I don't know what to call judgment call, but like there's just, it's a hurt that they're holding on to, I feel like. I, I, and I feel like we just got to, we don't know where they're coming from. And I think to hear them better is, is going to be helpful. And also making sure that prayer is covered in our motives, love is covered in our motives, mm -hmm. and that we can articulate better. And just maybe just listen and pray, Michael. Yeah, I, I think that we live in such an emotional society mm -hmm. and a society that reacts rather than responds. You know, mm -hmm. that's where the prayer comes in. So that prayer gives us that buffer yeah. to, to, to listen, you know, beyond ourselves and say, God, you know, where is this going? Where What do I do with this? You know, it, it's just people are so quick to just say the first thing that comes on the top of their head. <laughs> it's heated. And, and, you know, without without prayer, without, like I said, without yeah. a buffer in between there, uh, of course, everything's going to boil up. You know? yeah. I like that idea yeah. of a buffer. Yeah, it's, it's, I remember a time, I'm thinking of a time that Elise and I got into this uh, heated argument about something silly. And, uh, and I remember like, kind of like in the moment when it was getting tense and frustrating and everything like that. And this is like my wife, right? Like, this isn't like some stranger. This is like, and things got heated quick. And next thing you know, like the thing that was coming to my mind was, I either wanted to bench press my Sienna across the street, but I know my lower back would appreciate that. And then I heard like God kind of say, you know, Jason, stop talking and pray with your wife right now. And I'm like, that's a great idea. And I remember asking Elise, hey, Elise, you want to pray right now? And she, through gritted teeth, she was like, yeah, we can pray. <laughs> no, but we didn't hold hands, uh, but we, we, we prayed. And that was the thing is, and then later on, I remember reading this quote from St. Ephraim, and he said that prayer suppresses anger, it prevents emotions of pride, it draws into the soul the Holy Spirit, and lifts man's heart to God. So like, if we're trying to talk about something that is so important, let's not forget to maybe pray <laughs> before, during, and maybe after those conversations uh, to allow, I think, a softening of the heart, um, because there's so much pain, there's so much hurt, there's so much emotions at stake that, that's going on. And, and how can you talk through that? And I feel like if we can humble ourselves and not try to like match fire with fire, but to really bring love into the situations, mm -hmm. maybe that might, that might help and to really hear what's going on and then respond with love to what's going on. So um, I wanted to read this out in front. Maybe you can kind of share this on the Facebook page, but this is what the bishops are asking us for tomorrow. So this is really cool. These are the specific intentions. So I think one of the things I want to try to do is, uh, you know, we try to do as a family, we try to do a, a family rosary. But I want to bring the family together tonight and I want to talk to them about these five intentions that the bishops are asking us to pray for. So allowing this to also be the intentions of, of my children in their heart. And they, they have these five intentions for the feast day tomorrow of Our Lady of Fatima. And the first one is that the bishops are asking us um, fasting for these intentions for our nation, for the integrity of our judicial system, and that all branches of government um, be dedicated to seeking the common good and protecting the dignity and rights of the human persons from conception till natural death, number one. Number two, for the overturning of Roe versus Wade and Planned Parenthood versus Casey and the Supreme Court's final decision in Dobbs versus Jackson. Number three, that for the conversion of, heart, of the hearts and minds of those who advocate for abortion. Number four, for a new commitment to building an America where children are welcomed, cherished, cared for, where mothers and fathers are encouraged and strengthened, and where marriage and the family are recognized and supported as the true foundation of a healthy and flourishing society. And last one, number five, uh, for our Blessed Mother's intercession and guidance as the church continues to walk with mothers and families in need and continues to promote alternatives to abortion and seeks to create a culture of life. I was, uh, this is beautiful. I was listening to a, an interview with this. Um, he's a, a pastor. He's running for, 
He's a Democrat running for office in, in Illinois. And he made a comment. He said, the fundamental right to make the decision of when and where you're going to have a baby is a, is a real freedom, he says, that we need to protect. But offering abortion is just is just not the way to protect freedom. He's one of these only, it seems like there's a very few Democratic Democrats who are su supporting this pro-life cause. And I want to encourage everyone to just go deeper in their faith, go deeper in their witness that we need to build a culture. Mother Teresa talked about um, abortion is the, take, is the destroyer of peace because it kills two lives, the life of the child and the moral conscience of the mother. And so we need to, as a, as a church, really make this our constant prayer to help the hearts turn back to God the Father and allow the light of Christ to really guide us in our decisions, not just in our homes, but in our country in law. Thank you so much for watching. Father, can we close with a sure. prayer? In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Uh, Lord God, we thank you for the many uh, gifts we've received these past weeks of the Easter season. And as we uh, prepare for the Feast of Pentecost, we call upon Our Lady, especially uh, the Blessed Virgin Mary. She was there at Pentecost with the apostles. She received as well uh, that gift of the Spirit. And she shows us how important it is to pray. They were all gathered in that upper room together in prayer. They were united in prayer. And so we ask her to teach us how to pray. We ask her to help us to come to know uh, her son more fully. And we pray all this in her name. Hail Mary, full, full of grace, grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much.